Ah, oh, welcome back. Good day. I... Are you okay? Come here, come here, come here. No, no, I'm Nez. No. Come here. You look really upset. Come here. Okay. tell me what happened or not I first want to tell you that you're amazing that you're the best thing that ever happened to me and I love you and I can't imagine being without you okay and whatever happened today is hopefully a minor blip on the amazing life you're going to lead because you're an amazing person and I don't care if you're going to say, eh, that's corny. Yeah, okay, whatever. It's actually true. I'll have you know. All right. So no complaints, no nothing. <laughs> All right. So do you want to tell me what happened? Or would you rather I talk about football again? I can do that. <laughs> football really you want me to just uh talk about random players or what's the point of football Ooh, very philosophical I mean it's funny actually I was thinking the other day there is a um well, there's a lot of ways you can say that football's a microcosm of life. Well, you wanted me to get philosophical, so let's have philosophical then, huh? So, alright. First thing. Hmm. Well, there's the obvious one about working together and that no one, no one guy can carry the entire team really or not at least without the entire team kind of working for it and the guy being inspired and all this kind of stuff but selfishness gets you nowhere in football in the end of the day um, but there is also the premium on having skilled individuals and putting them in positions to do what they're good at and a lot of teams that fail fail because if they have talented players they don't put them in positions to succeed now you can have people who are really good at something but not give them the right situation and you won't see anything like the results you could see otherwise. See, this is all just management tips. I mean, that's a funny thing, right? Management of anything and management of football are going to correlate because they're management. Because at the end of the day, people hyperfixate on the sporting aspect and kind of forget about the human aspect. You're managing people. And the nice thing about football is that you don't have, you know, all the absurd, annoying HR loopholes to run around in, or at least not in the same way, right? Yes, HR loopholes can be very, very absurd. Trust me. I saw a thing online the other day where there was an HR course, a guidance course for young HR professionals in a giant firm. I will not name the firm. And it had a kind of teaching questionnaire sort of thing. <laughs> and the question was, what would raise the morale of staff? Uh, you know, in a certain situation, da, da 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 what would raise the morale of staff? And we had as options. Uh, it was, I think, a pool table or a ping pong table or something like that. Um... I can't remember what the other thing was, which tells you it was the wrong answer. And like something stupid and like obviously wrong, like something actively negative, like, you know, shouting at them or something. And a pay rise. The person doing the test selected pay rise, thinking the pool table is frivolous and no one's ever going to use it. Shouting people obviously won't work. So the pay rise is the only good option because 
obviously employees will feel more valued if they're paid well. Not only was this not the answer they wanted, it was literally put as like a big red X. Wrong. Wrong. Not, not always, not occasionally might not be the case or might, you know, maybe it doesn't work the majority of the time or not. Just wrong. Binary. 100% wrong. And instead, we had the pool table. So, you know, you can have a horrible working environment where you don't pay anybody well, where people get, you know, monitored on their lunch breaks, but as long as you have a pool table, oh, morale will be through the roof. <laughs> and the thing said that exit surveys often show that pay is not a contributing factor. And it's like, I mean, what universe do these people live in? It's quite staggering in any case i have uh you wanted a football philosophy analogy something like that right i've got a great one for you because i thought about it the other day so when i was watching my team playing under our manager maurizio pochettino back in the good old days we Hopefully we could do this once again sometime because hopefully he's going to be the next Spurs boss whenever that happens. But uh, he had a talented team, a good team. And when he had enough of the players who were good at, you know, the kind of, let's call it offensive aspect of football, passing to each other, controlling the ball, making good runs, like, uh, good football brains, good understanding of the game and good kind of natural feel for where they should be and all this kind of stuff. The team played some really good football, right? They were a good attacking team when they had enough of those kind of talented skill players playing together. And then an interesting thing happened where they weren't quite good enough to win the league. They were a little bit short and have like, they needed, you know, two or three more absolutely excellent players to really put them over the top and win, right? But more interesting than that, when they lost a couple of key players and suddenly you saw they went from a really, really good footballing team to really struggling off the back of basically one major change um, in midfield at that time. And he sat and went, how can one guy who, you know, he's still a professional, still works hard for the team, you know, it's not a lack of effort, he's just not as good with the ball. And it was amazing how much that could screw things up for the entire system, right? Now you might wonder, well, what's the point of this? What, how is this a footballing analogy or whatever? Well, I basically came up with this hypothesis that the good teams get to a kind of critical mass of good players. And by good players, I mean the kind of skillsy ball players. If you have enough of those guys in your team, you'll start to play good football. Doesn't necessarily mean you'll win every game or anything like that. Doesn't even mean you'll win more. But certainly for the eye test, for playing good, attractive, you know, quality, skillsy kind of football, there's a certain critical mass of talent when playing in the right positions that will get you that result just naturally, just by there being these kind of players. Conversely, you can ruin that critical mass because you can have a critical mass of bad players. And you take the team now, for example, where we have a few excellent players and a lot of below average to bad players, and the team is bad. The team can get bailed out by their kind of high-end talent guys. And <laughs> it's funny, actually. The phrase high-end talent and thinking about a team that get kind of bailed out by great players always makes me think of there's this youtuber called urinating tree i know a charming name uh who does stuff about the nfl so your version of football and <laughs> he always talked about his team the pittsburgh steelers a few years ago getting bailed out by the high-end talent in his videos he'd always play this song in the background that i always think of now i it's just so connected to the idea of players bailing out, you know, great players bailing out a team for its various incompetencies. Hold on, I'll pull it off my phone. Uh, it's this. Here I come to save the day. 
just that little here I come to save the day is just always what pops into my head. Anyway, the point is we have a lot of here I come to save the days um, at Tottenham in recent times in the last few years because our star players bail out the team. And this is the point that you have a critical mass of poor players with the ball make it impossible to play well as a team in terms of the passing and all that kind of stuff. Even when, you know, you have some great players, the great players can't do it alone because the other team will isolate the bad players, make them have the ball and not let the good players get on the ball. So, how is this philosophically interesting? Well, here's the point. Here's where I find it interesting. There is a point where both a good team, a good team sorry, can become a bad team. But also a bad team can become a good team on the basis of one player changing. That critical mass is like the story about putting a pebble in the right place in a river and the whole river changes the course of direction over time because of just one pebble. And the reason I find it inspiring as a thought is because, well, think about areas in the world that you're not happy, right? Maybe it's politics or maybe it's the, you know, environment or whatever it is whatever it is you're passionate about in life you can be the pebble you can be the help of that critical mass because even if there are a lot of people pushing in your view the right way if there are a lot of poor players with the ball the team will still be bad but if you get that one extra player to put you over the edge well then it can make a difference and you can be that extra player you don't have to do it all yourself. There's going to be other people who are pushing with you. There are going to be other good players on the team. And if there aren't, well done. You've got to be the first good player and then you've got to help recruit other good players. But the point is that a small, dedicated group of people can change the world because they can be the critical mass of good that a certain project needs. See? I told you, I can make brilliant philosophy out of football. And that was my share of thought. Well, one of my share of thoughts. The other one was about you lying in the bed naked with a, you know, come hither finger. <laughs> I, uh... So, you know, now that I've fulfilled my end of the bargain and half a share of thought, I really think we should do the other one. <laughs> Maybe later, I'll I'll take it. For now, hopefully at least my silly rambling is, you know, got you thinking about my silly rambling. And so I guess for the rest of the, the evening, while well, you cut a lot to me and we can watch more football, I guess I want you to think about and tell me what you're going to be that little bit of extra critical mass on. What it is you're going to be that last good player for it's a fun thought isn't it that making a positive difference might actually be a lot easier than you previously thought because it's not just you because you can be that one extra piece as opposed to the only piece <laughs> so let me know <laughs>